In our focus segment this evening, a hidden jewel in the Adirondacks. Lee Manchester tells us about the secret life of Mary Mackenzie. I knew her by reputation. I, I, knew, I knew the work that she had done, and I knew that um, with the amount of work that she had done and the quality that it would just, it would be wrong to just let that pass uh, into oblivion. Although he only met her a handful of times, Lee Manchester has found himself immersed in the past life of Mary Mackenzie. He has spent over two years gathering and editing all of the Mackenzie files for publication. For being a public historian, Mary Mackenzie was still a, an intensely private woman. She did not like to, to let a lot of people into her personal affairs, thoughts, feelings. And it was this part of her life that was only discovered after her death in 2003. Nancy Beatty was going through her, her desk and found this bundle of poetry bound in rubber bands, carefully typed on small note sheets, and uh, obviously saved to be found. It was really very, very well written, exquisite poetry about her life, about the Adirondacks, about Lake Placid, about her lost loves, uh, about her feel for just life in general. Like all of her poetry, Farewell and Give Applause was written in the 1930s. Love is a dark room beyond a bolted door. Farewell and come no more. Clasp hands with the hour, hunt out the swift year, farewell, and shed no tear. Begin where the end came, let there be no pause. Farewell, and give applause. But it wasn't just poetry that Mackenzie had tucked away. There was also her, the whole body of material that she had collected in her research on the history of North Elba and Lake Placid. It was two big file cabinets, chock full, four drawers each, three feet, three feet deep of incredible research that I knew that I, I, I could not let just sit. And there was a third body of work, which was a group of somewhere between 300 and 350 uh, historic slides that she had made of photographs of the area, a really probably the broadest uh, collection of, of historic photographs in existence. For just a few years in her early adult life, Mackenzie moved to New York City. She had a very cosmopolitan outlook for, for a, a young woman of her age, but she evidently still felt much more at home here in Lake Placid than she did she did in New York City. Um, she came here, back here, she worked uh, for a few years as the, either an assistant or a temporary town clerk working in the town hall. And that's where she met uh, Seymour McKenzie, the man that, uh, that she married in 1944. They had this house built for them. Never had any children, but had a, they were great, companions. They loved this place that they had built. They loved this yard that, that Mary had put together. Take from my lips the sound of my delight. Take from my eyes the wondrous gift of sight. Take from my swift, sure feet the power of flight. But please, God, no curlers tonight. There's just the thrill of discovery. When you've, when you've recovered something of value and you know that you're going to be able to give this back to the community uh, so that it can be used as it was intended. You can purchase Mary McKenzie's collected poetry as well as The Plains of Abraham, a collection of the region's history, but only at Beatty's Bookstore Plus on Main Street in Lake Placid. All proceeds will go to the Lake Placid Public Library. Well, that's our show for this week. As always, please send your comments and suggestions to journal at mountainlake.pbs.org. And we'll see you next week when we turn yet another page in our Mountain Lake Journal. For Ted Kowalczyk, I'm Mark Berry. Have a great week.
Mountain Lake Journal on Mountain Lake PBS is made possible in part by A.N. Derringer Incorporated. Derringer is a provider of international logistics services, including international freight forwarding, warehouse and distribution, customs brokerage, and